As the books and seasons of Game of Thrones have progressed, we've all grown accustomed to the many standout characters that have been given to us. A character that I had such an overwhelming and emotionally positive response to was Sir Jorah Mormont. Sir Jorah, despite his unfavourable position in the first novel, really does go on to display an incredible level of loyalty to Daenerys Targaryen, which makes the story that more enjoyable to tell as he really became one of my favourite characters. In today's video, I'm going to take you through the entire life of Jorah, from his early days on Bear Island to his final moments during the Battle of Winterfell. Welcome to Game of Thrones lore, please enjoy the life of Sir Jorah Mormont. Sir Jorah, for me, is such a likeable character and he has a brilliantly crafted story, so let's start with his beginnings. He was born on Bear Island roughly around the year 254 AC to Jorah Mormont and his wife. Now, there's no further information on Jorah's mother, but due to the integrity of his father and the situation that followed in years to come with him leaving Bear Island, it could be assumed that Jorah's mother passed away at some point. Now Jorah was married at a young age to a girl from House Glover, as desired by his father Jorah Mormont, Lord of Bear Island. They were married for 10 years and lived happily, but Jorah's wife struggled to carry a child to full term. On her third pregnancy, despite carrying the child longer than the previous two terms, she died due to complications with yet again another miscarriage. This really had a detrimental effect on Jorah. He had been with his wife from such a young age that it was difficult to adjust to life without her. Without a stated reason, Jor gave up the lordship of House Mormont and joined the Night's Watch, much to the surprise of many, which in turn made his son, Jorah, the lord of Bear Island in his own right. Jorah was a well-trained swordsman and fought on the side of the rebels during Robert's Rebellion. He was present during the Battle of the Trident in 283 AC and also saw the aftermath of the Sack of King's Landing. Just when Jorah began considering offers to take a new wife, Balon Greyjoy, Lord of the Iron Islands, broke out in open rebellion against Robert Baratheon. Jorah showed strong courage during Greyjoy's rebellion, being one of the first men through the breach during the Siege of Pike. His efforts were so impressive and inspirational that he received a knighthood from King Robert Baratheon in recognition of his bravery and dedication. During a tourney at Lannisport to celebrate the victory over the Greyjoy rebels, Jorah met Lyness Hightower, who was half his age, and became instantly smitten with her beauty. He asked for her favour to wear during the tournament, for which she gave her permission. Jorah defeated all challengers. He faced Sir Jaime Lannister last, and after they broke nine lances to no result, King Robert Baratheon granted Jorah the victory. Jorah named Lyness his Queen of Love and Beauty, and asked Lyness's father, Lord Leighton Hightower, for her hand in marriage that same night. Surprisingly, Leighton agreed, and Jorah and Aless were married at Lannisport, after which they returned to Bear Island. However, the marriage did not remain happy for long. Having spent her life as part of wealthy House Hightower in Old Town, Lyness was unprepared for life on the harsh and isolated Bear Island and quickly grew miserable. Jorah attempted to reproduce the lifestyle to which his wife was accustomed to, but only succeeded in driving himself into financial ruin by lavishing her with expensive gifts, hiring a cook from Old Town and a harper from Lannisport. Having built a fine ship, Jorah attended festivals with his wife in those two cities as well, and he borrowed from moneylenders while in Bravos. He also participated in various tourneys, but he never replicated his success at Lannisport. Jorah was now in an extremely difficult position as the moneylenders had began recalling their loans. Desperate to pay off his debts quickly, Jorah participated in one of the Seven Kingdoms' oldest illegal practices, slavery. When the House Mormon's liege, Eddard Stark, learned that Jorah had sold poachers to a Tiyoshi slaver, he condemned him to death. However, when the Warden of the North arrived on Bear Island to execute him in 293 AC, Jorah had already fled with Lyness. Trying to at least save some honour within his family, Jorah left behind Longclaw, the ancestral Valerian steel sword of the Mormons. Jorah's aunt, Lady Mage Mormont, 
sent the blade to Castle Black to his father, Jor. Instead of at least requesting to join his father at the Night's Watch, Jorah instead took Lyness with him into exile. While he wanted to go to Bravos, Lyness wanted a warmer home, so they fled to Lys instead, where Jorah sold his ship. Within half a year, they had no money left, so Jorah sold his service as a sellsword. However, while Jorah was fighting the Bravosi on the Rhoyne, Lyness took Traegar or Molin as her lover and moved into the Merchant Prince's home. When Jorah returned to Lys, Traegar informed him that he would be enslaved for his debts unless he gave up Lyness and left Lys. Heartbroken and dejected, Jorah went to Volantis, where he spent the better part of a year. He remained near the Free Cities, travelling as far east as Vase Dothrak, and having spent time with the Dothraki, eventually came to speak their language and learn their customs. At some point, Jorah became a spy for Lord Varus, Robert's Master of Whispers, in order to get a pardon from the King and be allowed to return to Westeros once again. Jorah's story now moves to the first novel, where he is present at the feast held in Drogo's Manse in Pentos, where Princess Daenerys Targaryen is presented to the Dothraki Khal. Jorah enters the service of the Beggar King Viserys Targaryen and he becomes a constant companion to the two Targaryens. During the wedding of Daenerys to Drogo, Jorah gives her a small stack of old histories and songs of the Seven Kingdoms written in the common tongue. When the Khalasar leaves Pentos the next day, both he and Viserys accompany them. Despite having sworn his sword to Viserys, Jorah's regard for Viserys is very low. During the Khalasar's march to Vase Dothrak, he displays more loyalty towards Daenerys instead. As he is currently a spy, he is quick to inform Robert about Daenerys' marriage to Drogo. And when Daenerys becomes pregnant, Jorah also informs Varys, resulting in Robert's decision to have Daenerys, her child and Viserys all assassinated. Jorah then counsels Daenerys on the Dothraki way of thinking and living. At Vase Dothrak, he threatens Viserys when the latter attempts to steal dragon eggs, Magister Illyrio Mopatis' gift to Daenerys. Jorah is given a place of respect at the feast after Daenerys eats the stallion heart, and he is unable to calm Viserys when the would-be king enters the hall drunk and the knight watches as Drogo has Viserys killed with molten gold. Jorah then accompanies Daenerys and her escort to the Western Market, where he insists on visiting a caravan captain alone. Illyrio has sent a letter warning that King Robert has promised a lordship to whomever slays Viserys, Daenerys and or her child. Jorah returns to Daenerys' side just in time to confront a merchant about attempting to sell her poisoned wine. For his role in saving Daenerys and her unborn son, Khal Drogo allows Jorah to choose any horse from his herds, with the exception of his own stallion and Daenerys' silver. After Jorah warns Drogo that there will be more attempts, Drogo declares that he will invade the Seven Kingdoms. Jorah remains with the Khalasar as they travel south towards Lazar. He participates in battle when Drogo falls upon the Khalasar of Khal Ogo, who had just sacked the town of the Lazarine. Daenerys orders Jorah to stop Drogo's men from raping the Lazarine women, and although Jorah admires Daenerys' intent, he tries to explain that she cannot save all the women. Drogo is wounded in the battle, and although Miri Mazdur has seen to his wound, the Khal ignores the Magi's instructions, and his wound begins to fester. When Drogo falls off his horse, Jorah urges Daenerys to flee to Ashai before Drogo dies, as her child would otherwise be killed and she will be forced to join the Dosh Kaleen at Vase Dothrak. Daenerys has Mary perform blood magic on Drogo, which causes chaos in the Khalasar. Jorah duels Kotho when Drogo's blood rider wishes to stop the ritual. Although Kotho's Arak cuts off half of Jorah's ear and wounds his lip, the knight is able to kill his opponent. And when Daenerys goes into labour and the midwives refuse to come, Jorah takes her into the tent, unaware that Mary has forbidden anyone from entering. Daenerys' child, Rhaegal, is a stillborn monstrosity. When Daenerys wakes up from her fevered sleep, a weakened Jorah is unable to tell her the truth about the child, so Mary tells her instead. Daenerys and Jorah believe that by carrying her into the tent during the ritual, Jorah inadvertently caused her son's death. Jorah escorts Daenerys to Drogo, 
revealing that his Kalasar is gone and Drogo is now catatonic. Daenerys, humanely as possible, ends her husband's life. Preparations are made for Drogo's funeral pyre, but Jorah fears that Daenerys plans to commit suicide by entering the pyre. He begs her to come with him to Yaitai, Karth, the Jade Sea and Ashai. Daenerys promises she does not intend to die with Drogo, and when she later asks the men from her Kaz and Jorah to all swear their service to her, Jorah is the only one to do so. Daenerys promises him a dragon forged Valyrian steel longsword and names him the first of her queen's guard. Jorah then suggests selling the dragon eggs, but Daenerys has them placed upon Drogo's pyre. She has Jorah and Ricaro bind Mary to the pyre. Jorah shouts at Daenerys when she walks into the burning pyre, which kills Mary. When the flames have gone and the ground has cooled off the next morning, Daenerys is amidst the ashes, unhurt with three living dragons. Jorah wordlessly falls to his knees, while the remaining Dothraki swear Daenerys their loyalty. Jorah's hip has not yet fully healed, and when they arrive at Vase Taloro, he counsels Daenerys to remain in the city for a while, until her Kalasar has recovered its strength. Jorah tells Daenerys about his marriages to a Glover who died, and Lyness Hightower who abandoned him. When Jorah mentions that she resembles Lyness, Daenerys realises that Jorah is in love with her. She tends to his wound, and it finally begins to heal. Jorah then accompanies the Kalasar to Karth. He is mistrustful of the Karthene, especially the merchant prince Zaro Zandaxos, the warlock Poyat Pri, and the shadowbinder Quaith, and he counsels Daenerys to not linger in the city for long. Daenerys sends Jorah to the port of Karth to learn about tidings from the Seven Kingdoms. A skeptical Jorah disagrees with Daenerys openly declaring her intent to take the Iron Throne herself, as she lacks an army, gold and ships. Unlike Zaro, Jorah is intrigued when Daenerys dresses in the Carthine fashion, bearing a breast. Although Jorah warns Daenerys that she will not receive any help from the pureborn of Karth, she visits them anyway, taking Rhaegal with her. Jorah remains behind at Zaro's palace to guard the other two dragons, Drogon and Viserion. Upon her return, Jorah guesses that Zaro hopes to obtain a dragon by marrying Daenerys. Advising her to travel further east for safety, but not to as high as suggested by Quaith, Jorah explains that Illyrio Vopatis lacks the power to seat her upon the Iron Throne. He also explains Daenerys must gain the support of some of the High Lords of Westeros, but admits he does not know how to accomplish that goal. Daenerys then sends Jorah to Pyat Pri to arrange a meeting with the Undying Ones. Uncertain of the House of the Undying, Jorah urges Daenerys to take him with her, but Piat insists she enter alone. Jorah warns Daenerys to remember Miri Mazdur before she enters, and remains outside of the House of the Undying until Daenerys emerges again. He kneels beside Daenerys, while her blood riders keep the warlock from attacking her. When travelling to Pentos and hearing about the Unsullied from Jorah, Daenerys is excited by the idea of acquiring the beginnings of her own army. However, Jorah, overly concerned and desperate to ensure her protection, kisses her and offers himself in marriage. An uncomfortable Daenerys ensures she is no longer alone with the knight and does not return his feelings. When she visits the Plaza of Pride to view the Unsullied of Astapor, Daenerys leaves Jorah on Valerian, taking Arstan with her instead. Arstan, who saved Daenerys from an assassination attempt and was welcomed into her fold, is against Jorah's plan to have Daenerys by the eunuch soldiers, and he reminds her that Jorah had once been a slaver himself. When Jorah again supports the purchasing of the Unsullied, an angry Daenerys slaps him after learning the true nature of how the Unsullied are inhumanely created and will listen to any command without question. She later tells him that she refuses to shed the blood of the innocents, and Jorah tells her about Aegon's conquest and the sack of King's Landing, where many women were raped. He states that the Unsullied do not rape, sack or plunder. Daenerys wishes to lead free men into battle who believe in her cause. Jorah then accompanies Daenerys back to the Plaza of Pride, where she strikes a deal with the Good Masters. She then frees the eunuchs during the fall of Astapor 
asking them to join her by their own choice and ordering those who do so to choose officers from among themselves. Grey Worm, who was chosen for the highest rank, is trained by Jorah, who finds him promising. Jorah then urges Daenerys to abandon the freed men who have followed her from Astapor, but Daenerys finds herself unable to do so. At Yunkai, Jorah states his belief that the army of the Yellow City can easily be defeated by Daenerys' forces. He is present for each of the three meetings with the captains of the Free Companies and the Wise Masters, and for once agrees with Arston when the latter argues that Mero, the captain of the Second Sons, is not to be trusted. When Daenerys tells her council of her plans, Jorah approves. He later brings Dario Naris of the Stormcrows, who was caught sneaking into the camp, to Daenerys and counsels against using the Stormcrows in the battle against Young Kai after Dario declares the loyalty of the company. He then leads Daenerys' Unsullied into the battle near Young Kai and later brings her word of their victory. He sends men to hunt Mero, who has escaped captivity. Jorah follows Daenerys to Marine, unhappy with the large number of freed slaves that follow Daenerys, calling them mouths with feet. He does not believe they have to fight the hero of Marine and calls the victory hollow. He advises Daenerys to leave Marine B, as they see no way to enter the city or even starve the city out, and instead march for Pentos. He admits that in that scenario, Daenerys will be unable to feed the freed slaves who have decided to follow her, and Daenerys refuses to let that happen. When Arston saves Daenerys from Mero, she angrily accuses Jorah of not informing her of Mero's escape. Upon learning that Arston, an old man with a wooden staff, managed to kill Mero, Jorah becomes suspicious once again. Arston reveals that he is actually Sir Barristan Selmy, formerly Lord Commander of the King's Guard for Robert Baratheon I, and he tells Daenerys that someone has been informing on her since the day she married Drogo. Jorah admits that he had spied on her and Viserys, but he had stopped when he fell in love with her. Angrily, Daenerys sends them both with Belwas and 20 men into the sewers of Marine to take the city for her. Although Daenerys half hopes that Jorah and Arston will die, they are successful in freeing Marine's slaves, granting her victory in the Siege of Marine. The thought of Jorah makes Daenerys feel angry, agitated and physically sick, but she summons him and Arston nonetheless. Although shamed, Jorah refuses to beg for her forgiveness and instead insists that Daenerys forgive him on account of his loyal service and love to her. Although Daenerys had plans to forgive him, she finds herself unable to, realising it had been Jorah who had informed King Robert of her pregnancy. Instead, she banishes Jorah from Marine, swearing to kill him if she ever sees him again. At the brothel in Selhorse, Jorah hires a beautiful whore with silver hair. He recognises Tyrion Lannister when the dwarf comes down the stairs of the brothel, cartwheeling, and takes him prisoner, planning to deliver him to Daenerys. Jorah travels with his captive on horseback to Volantis, where they overhear the Red Priest, Benero, preach that Daenerys will come and free them all. Jorah sells his horse and saddle and buys manacles for his captive, to make him seem like a true slave. He rents a room in the merchant's house where he chains Tyrion to the wall. Although Jorah had not given Tyrion his name, the dwarf figures it out for himself and reveals that Varys had sent him on his journey from Pentos. Jorah, admitting he accepted gold from Varys once, insists his loyalties lie elsewhere now. Jorah takes Tyrion with him when he visits the widow of the waterfront in search for a passage to Marine. She tells Tyrion to be on the Selasori Koran when it sets sail for Karth. While Tyrion respectfully expresses gratitude, Jorah expresses doubt, but the widow insists Benero has foreseen that the ship will never reach its intended destination. Tyrion guesses that Jorah was sent away by Daenerys. Jorah then punches Tyrion and tells him to find another place to sleep. The ship encounters another, fiercer storm, during which several crew members are lost or mortally wounded. Jorah claims to Tyrion that he slept right through it, which Tyrion doubts. Following the storm, they are stranded once more for 19 days until a distant ship appears which Jorah identifies as a slaver. Jorah kills three slavers with his sword, but is eventually overwhelmed. He is chained to an oar, beaten, whipped, starved and branded with a demon's mask on his right cheek 
to mark him as a dangerous and disobedient slave. He remains defiant of his captors until he learns of Daenerys' marriage to Hizdar Solalak. Then all the fight goes out of him. The slaver takes the captives taken on the Selasori Karan to the slave market the young Kai have created during the second siege of Marine. Jorah is placed on the auction block after Tyrion and Penny have been sold. Not knowing why, Tyrion lies and convinces his overseer that Jorah is part of the rat, playing the bear who attacks Penny, the maiden fair, while Tyrion is the knight who saves her. Jorah is bought by Yazan as well, but he does not adapt well in Yazan's ownership either. He is sullen and uncooperative in the mummery acts with Tyrion and Penny, and mostly ignores any commands given by the nurse or replies with curses. As a result, Jorah is confined in a cage and is frequently beaten. Tyrion leads him into the camp of the Second Sons to Ben Plum, the company's captain. As Jorah's face has become unrecognisable, Plum and his sergeants recognise him only by his voice. Although they are surprised that Jorah has returned to Marine despite his exile, they allow him to sign a contract with the company, removing his chains. Having fled from Daznak's pit atop a Drogon, a hallucinating Daenerys has a vision of Jorah while in the Dothraki Sea. The Shadow Jorah reminds her that she is the blood of the dragon. Now guys, it's at this point where I finish referring to the books for Jorah's story and move over to the TV show instead due to the small fact that the books haven't been completed yet and there's a lot more to Jorah's life to tell, albeit it can be considered the closing chapters. So I'm going to take it from season 6 as it's the first season after the last completed book. Back in the Great Pyramid, Tyrion addresses both Jorah and Dario's feelings for Daenerys, understanding how one could love the wrong woman. The three argue about Jorah's betrayal, but they will not make any judgments without Daenerys first. The dragon, Drogon, was seen taking her north and it is agreed that Jorah will join Dario to ride and search for her. Grey Worm, still recovering from his injuries, offers to go with them as does Tyrion. Dario firmly nixes both ideas. Grey Worm is needed to command the Unsullied in keeping the city under control, while Tyrion is the only one of them to have any political experience. Thus, Dario and Jorah depart together, hoping to find their queen in the Dothraki Sea. Jorah and Dario follow Drogon's trail into the Dothraki Sea, where Dario gets him to admit he is in love with Daenerys. While Dario isn't looking, Jorah examines the spreading grayscale on his arm to determine how long he has left to live. They eventually discover a circle of hoof prints where Jorah finds Daenerys' ring in the middle, leading them to realise that the Thraki Kalasar has taken her captive. Jorah and Dario then make their way to face Dothrak, with Dario taunting Jorah about how Daenerys chose him as her lover. Jorah scans the city and deduces that Daenerys has been taken to the temple of the Dosh Kaleen. Dario confronts him on his attraction to Daenerys, stating that his age makes her feeling the same way highly unlikely. The men leave their weapons outside the city and Dario notices Jorah's grayscale. He assures Dario that he was not infected and the two sneak into the city at night. However, they are caught by two Dothraki and Jorah tries to pass himself off and Dario as lost merchants, but the Dothraki see through the ruse. After killing them, Jorah and Dario find Daenerys and offer to help her escape the city, but she enlists them in her plan to take control of the Dothraki. Jorah and Dario kill the guards outside the temple, in which the Khals are determining Daenerys' fate and bar the door, resulting in the Khals being unable to escape when Daenerys sets the temple ablaze. When Daenerys emerges from the inferno unburnt, Jorah and Dario bow before her, along with the rest of the Dothraki. The next day, overlooking the smouldering ruins of the Temple of the Dosh Kaleen, Daenerys confronts Jorah. She reminds him that she has banished him twice, but remembers that he has twice returned and has saved her life, and she ponders what to do. Jorah interjects that she must send him away, revealing his grayscale. He explains that he does not know of a cure, or how long the disease takes, but that he will end things before he becomes a stone man himself. Jorah then tells Daenerys that Tyrion Lannister was right about him. He loves her, and he will always love her, and begins to leave. Daenerys, however, stops him, and rather than dismissing him, tearfully orders Jorah to go and find a cure for his disease, so that he may be by her side 
Once again, when she takes back the Seven Kingdoms. Jorah and Danny then part on good terms as he watches her lead her new Kalasar out of Vase Dothrak, before embarking on his own new quest. Jorah has travelled to Old Town seeking a cure for his Grayscale, which has progressed enough to cover much of his chest and back, as well as his entire left arm. He has been confined to one of the six cells in the Citadel. As Samuel Tarly is collecting empty bowls from cells, Jorah reaches out for him and asks if Daenerys has reached Westeros yet, but Sam claims he does not know. Jorah is later deemed beyond saving by Archmaester Ebros and is told that he has one more day before he will be deported to the Valerian Peninsula to live out the rest of his days with the Stone Men, as the Grayscale will take over his mind in six months. Within that time, he still seeks to end his own life before then. He properly introduces himself to Samwell, explaining that there is no point writing to Lyanna Mormont as House Mormont forgot about him a long time ago. Later that night, as Jorah writes a farewell note to Daenerys, he is visited by Sam, who properly introduces himself as one of the Night's Watch and claims that out of respect for his father, Jorah Mormont, he will try to save him from Grayscale, though he admits he has never tried before and is the only one who will, despite it being risky for both Sam and Jorah. Aware of the alternative, Jorah consents to the treatment. He is given rum as an anesthesia and a mouth guard to bite on during the painful procedure to stay silent. Bearing the pain, Jorah allows Sam to start peeling the infected skin away. The treatment works and with his grayscale now cured, Ebros allows the release of Jorah from his cell. However, when Ebros asks of the disease, Jorah says it must have cured itself from him having plenty of rest an attempt to spare Sam any blame as he had been forbidden by Ebros to perform the treatment. Before Jorah leaves, he tells Sam that he will return to Daenerys, that both she and Sam have saved his life. He then shakes Sam's offered hand in gratitude before leaving. After leaving the Citadel, Jorah makes his way to Dragonstone, where he is finally reunited with Daenerys, who gladly accepts him back into her service and calls him a friend. He also meets Jon Snow, who served under his father Jorah Mormont in the Night's Watch. Jorah later attends a meeting, during which Tyrion Lannister suggests that they should capture a white and bring it to Cersei Lannister, thus proving that the army of the dead is marching upon Westeros and allowing Daenerys to take her troops to help Jon. Jorah volunteers to join the mission and leaves Dragonstone with Jon, Davos Seaworth and Gendry. Upon arriving at Eastwatch by the Sea, Jorah quickly recognises the imprisoned Thoros of Myr, having fought together in the Greyjoy Rebellion. Unfortunately, the mention of Jorah's family name creates friction with Tormund due to Jorah Mormont's role in persecuting the wildlings. Nevertheless, Jorah accompanies the party north of the Wall. Once beyond the Wall, Jorah discusses his father's death with Jon Snow, stating that being killed by his own men was the worst way for his father to pass away. They also discuss the fact that Ned Stark wanted to execute Jorah, and Jon offers to give Longclaw back to House Mormont. However, Jorah refuses, as he brought shame on his family, he has no longer the right to wield the weapon, which must remain with Jon as Jor, his father, wanted. Later, the party is attacked by an undead bear, which severely injures Thoros before Jorah kills the beast with a final strike. Jorah and Thoros then discuss the Siege of Pike, with Thoros acknowledging that he was so drunk that day, he completely forgot the battle. The party finally encounters a small group of whites led by a white orger. They attack it, and Jorah is assaulted by a white who tries to choke him to death before being shattered when Jon kills the white orger leading them. They successfully capture an undead, but it draws the attention of the whole undead army, which rushed at them. While Genji returns to Eastwatch to send a raven to Daenerys, Jorah and the others find refuge on a small island in the middle of the frozen lake that the Whites cannot cross. They spend the night on the rocks, to which Thoros does not survive, and are later attacked by the army of the Night King as the ice layer over the water is solid enough. Jorah fights along the others with a pair of dragonglass daggers, destroying many Whites, but the party is easily outnumbered and only survives thanks to the arrival of Daenerys and her dragons. Jorah is shocked and saddened when he witnesses the death of Daenerys' dragon Viserion at the hands of the Night King. 
The survivors managed to escape except Jon Snow, who was taken beneath the lake by the Whites. Back to the Wall, Jorah tells Daenerys that they should return to King's Landing, but instead they attend Jon's return to Eastwatch after he was saved by Benjen Stark. Jorah goes to King's Landing to attend the negotiation between Daenerys, Cersei and Jon, explaining the origins of the Dragon Pit to Missande on the way. They are greeted by Bronn, who escorts them to their seats, with Jorah sitting right next to Daenerys. Jorah does not speak during the discussions. Like everyone else, he is surprised when Jon openly pledges allegiance to Daenerys and stays at the Dragon Pit while Tyrion tries to convince Cersei to help them after she left the negotiation. After Cersei seemingly agrees to send troops to fight the army of the Night King, Jorah leaves King's Landing with the others and he makes his way to the north. Jorah arrives in Winterfell along with Daenerys and her large army. He later goes into the castle's library with Daenerys so she can meet Samwell and thank him for having saved Jorah from the Greyscale. When Sam details that he is the son of Randall Tarly and the brother of Dickon Tarly, who were both executed by Daenerys, Jorah looks away as they face Samwell's evident sorrow. Sam excuses himself, after which both Daenerys and Jorah look on in regretful irony, with Sam having saved Daenerys' oldest friend, but Daenerys herself having killed Samwell's family. Sensing that Daenerys could remove Tyrion from the position of Hand of the Queen for having underestimated his sister, Jorah goes to Daenerys and vouches for Tyrion, insisting that he learns from his mistakes and that he should remain her hand, even though Daenerys considered Jorah himself for the position before his betrayal was revealed. Jorah also advises Daenerys to try and build a more cordial relationship with Sansa Stark. He later attempts to convince his younger cousin Lyanna Mormont to remain far from the battle in order to preserve the future of House Mormont, but she refuses, still wishing Jorah good luck in the fight to come. Jorah is then approached by Samwell, who gives him his family sword, Heartsbane, and Jorah promises to wield it in memory of his father, Jor. He then rides into battle as the army of the dead has arrived. As the battle is about to begin, Jorah and his Dothraki cavalry are approached by Melisandre, who sets fire to the cavalry's blades to help them in their fight against the dead. Jorah then leads the charge of the cavalry, but is forced to retreat as his forces are completely overwhelmed and destroyed by the whites. During the battle, Jorah destroys innumerable whites, but then witnesses Daenerys falling off Drogon, who was being attacked by a swarm of whites. He runs to pick her up and protects her from the encircling dead. While protecting his queen, Jorah is stabbed multiple times and is mortally wounded. Despite his injuries, his love and dedication to Daenerys drives him to hold on taking even more blows and slashes, all to protect his queen. Moments after Arya Stark kills the Night King, Jorah finally collapses and dies, staring into the eyes of his beloved queen Daenerys, having fulfilled his vow to protect her, while Daenerys, visibly heartbroken and distraught, grieves over her friend's body. In conclusion, Sir Jorah Mormont is one of, if not my favourite character from Game of Thrones, mostly due to his sincerity and humility. His acceptance of consequences for the mistakes he's made really do define his character, and I believe he got the perfect ending, serving his queen in life and death. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at PotterFolklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.